I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Marissa, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I'm terrific. That's awesome. But I have to share the power of the attitude, of choosing an attitude. Yes, please share. So you already know what I'm going to share. So Mm -hmm. for the last few weeks, I've taken Deborah Searle's advice, and every morning I choose an attitude for the day. Mm Mm-hmm. I write it down in my Evernote journal, uh, and I say the attitude I'm choosing and why I'm choosing it. And, and I share it to some, send it with some folks. So if anybody wants to know what my daily attitude is, just send me an email, and I'll put you on the list to get that. So this morning, I woke up, and at about 6.30, I'm sitting in my, having my quiet time to get centered for the day, and I choose, the, the word that I choose, uh, chose for this morning, the attitude that I chose for this morning was acceptance. And I had reasons. There were some challenges going on. You know, we're going to have, be having a bunch of company because of a death in the family, which I'm glad that we, we have the space to house people. And my plans were all rearranged for the rest of the week and the weekend. So I thought, I better have a mindset of acceptance. And at about 8.30, I get an email from a company where I'm going to be doing some training. And I was getting ready to go because the training is supposed to be from 9.30 in the morning till 11.30 in, in the morning for 10 weeks. That's no problem. I'm getting ready to leave the house to go do the training. And the email says, what time this evening are you coming (laughs) for the training? And that was the first time I realized (laughs) that I'm teaching from 930 at night till 1130 at night. Uh, But the amazing part was it didn't get me all worked up. Because you had already chosen your attitude. Because I had chosen my attitude for the day. And it was to be more accepting of things and just to take the day as it comes and not overreact to things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it really does work. Mm-hmm. How do you think you may have may have reacted otherwise? I mean, is that something that would have rattled you or? Oh, yeah, I would have yeah. been a mess. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my goodness, how's this going to work? I'm going to be so tired. How can <laughs> I now tomorrow morning I'm going to go to my coaching clients out in Auburn and I'm going to be half asleep while I'm sitting there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I would have catastrophized mm-hmm. big time. Well, but, but you mean now think of it this way, right? You've accepted it. You now yeah. have every Wednesday morning for the next 10 weeks free to do exactly other things in the office. Um, you could coaching coach, clients, coach, train, right? Yeah. You know, do some deep you know, work. And I was, I was getting stressed about the fact that I was mm-hmm. going to be losing a lot of Wednesday mornings in a row mm-hmm. because that is a favorite time slot for a lot of my coaching clients. Mm-hmm. So guess what? <laughs> it's free. Now the only thing I'll be losing is sleep. Yeah. But that's okay. It's, once, it's not that much. Once a week for 10 weeks. Exactly. You can catch up. You know, and the class starts. So I started thinking about all the positives right away. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just gained back my Wednesday mornings. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you know what? This class, our, our Wednesday night Bible study at our church ends at 830. Oh. So I can easily get to the place by nine. So right. I don't, nothing in my life gets rearranged. Right. You still with get the exception to of a have, couple hours of sleep. Have dinner with your family. Yeah, yeah you know, Exactly. I would have found it much more frustrating if it would have been like 6 to 8 mm-hmm. or 6.30 to 8.30. At right, night. right. So anyways, it, but again, it was choosing that mindset, that mm-hmm. attitude helped prepare me for what was going to be right around the corner. And, you know, um, you, you know if, if you're a person that, if you're a person of faith or a person that believes in the law of attraction kind of thing, mm-hmm. there's a reason why it happened. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why I chose it to be prepared for the event that was going to come. So Mm -hmm. it's all good. It is all good. And again, if any of our listeners want to know what my, want me to include them on my daily, what's my attitude for today, just send me your, send me an email. My email address is in the show notes and Mm -hmm. I'll add you to the list. Cool. So we're going to talk about who's controlling who. Mm -hmm. So is it who's controlling who or is it who is controlling whom? I don't know. I was wondering the same thing, and I probably probably need to figure that out sooner rather than later. Yeah, especially since our post. <laughs> since we're publishing this. and everything. By now, the post would be out as people are listening to this. Right. So, so if for some reason it changed, you're going to know that between now and when we posted it, you figured out it's whom or who. Yes. Anyways. It always throws me so, for a loop. Me too. And, you know, and then my all of my um, grammar editing software changes its mind from week to week and mm-hmm. whatever but the, seriously the topic is you know um i kind of wrote this about our goals and our our uh, plans that we have for our life and things like this so we're mm-hmm. you know we're almost at the end of february 
um, there's only a, another day mm -hmm. by the time this gets posted. And so how are we doing with our goals, our New Year's resolutions, all those mm -hmm. wonderful things that we do? And when I did some research, I found that um, 64% of the resolutions last beyond the first month and only 46 beyond 46% last after six months i honestly thought those seemed higher than some of the other statistics i had seen yeah i was looking for more dire data but i couldn't find any. <laughs> so well, um I, but it did get worse yeah it does because it said what's even worse is that only 14 percent of people over 50 achieve their resolution so oh my goodness that's probably where we get it it's old people like me <laughs> who can't get our resolutions done um Gold's Gym actually used Cliff as a, Cliff as an acrostic, if, what, if that's what you want to call it, um, mm -hmm. to identify why. So the C is people can't find time. L is they lack a game plan to keep going. I, they're ignoring their commitment and falling into old patterns. Mm, there we go. <laughs> F, frustrated with a lack of early results. And the last F is forgetting why you started. And And really, it's... It's true that, that all of those reasons that Gold's Gym came up with are reasons why we don't achieve the goals we want. Now, we all know that can't find time is a lie. Mm -hmm. It's that we aren't valuing time. Um, and so, you know, you and I joked even before our, our, we started recording that, you know, there's, there's goals that I struggle with goals mm -hmm. so when do I. I don't meet the goals. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we there's various reasons for them. So... Uh, for me, um, it typically is that the goal has not really been important enough. It's mm -hmm. a nice idea, but I haven't really identified the why mm -hmm. that I need to achieve it. Right. And that's kind of where I was going to go first, too, with the, the second F in the cliff list here. Forgetting why you started or not even yeah. knowing why you started in the first right. place. Right. And, and oftentimes... And, and two, I think right behind that one is frustrated with the lack of early results. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I can go on a diet and within two days I lose a pound and I can see it and then two days later I lose another pound, okay, now I got momentum. Right. You know, but the problem that we have in that scenario is why, you know, I haven't gotten into the why I want to lose the weight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like, I hear a lot of people say, well, my son, Jeremy would say a lot of times, you know, in, in the ICU, they're asking people, so do you smoke? No. When did you quit? Yeah. This morning, just before my heart attack, Yeah. you know, so until there's a real good reason to achieve a goal, we oftentimes don't stick to our plan. And, and maybe mm -hmm. that's the first thing that so the goal, you know, what I don't, I don't want this to be a whining podcast. Mm -hmm. I want this to be a podcast that helps us figure out how do we get back on track. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a couple notes here. One is, you know, when did we first get off track? So we almost have to do an autopsy on the failure in this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not us. It's our plan. So what did we miss in the plan? Um, what was going on at the time that we, we failed? So, you know, is it that a lot that life happened? Mm -hmm. You know, kids got sick. Um, you know, you know what it's like, and and mm -hmm. I know all the young mothers do, and and young fathers do. So you can have a family where there's three kids, and one gets sick one day, two days later, now you got two of them sick. Three days later, there's three of them sick. Mm -hmm. You know, and life gets in the way. Okay, so that those are valid reasons that we might need to do a reset. Um, what are the influences applying pressure at the time? that got us back to going into the old ways, you know, is it, uh, if, if I can use the, the example of a diet, so, okay, I went back to eating poorly. Well, what transpired? Oh, I went on, I went on vacation. <laughs> okay. So, or, you know, we were, um, everybody was really busy, didn't want to have to cook at home. So we went to a restaurant. Well, why did you pick the restaurant where there isn't anything healthy to eat type of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them, you know, how are you feeling physically? Were you extremely tired? How are you feeling emotionally? So I think we, we just have to come to grips with where we are in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then we can make a plan to get back on track. Right. And I think the, one of the most important things, too, is to remember, like, just because you, you lost sight of the goal temporarily doesn't mean you can't hop back on and reset exactly. and start 
start back where you left off or start new. Um, there's nothing magical about January 1st. So right. whether it be a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, it doesn't matter. That famous line, right? Diet starts Monday. Um, right. You know, your goals can start at, or resume at any point. If, sure. You know, once you've kind of clarified, I like how you, you talk about doing an autopsy on what went wrong, um, because then you can identify how to move forward in a better way. Right. And, you know, I, I shared with you before we started. And so for full transparency, I use this as an example on my vision board next to my desk. I have a weight to that I want to weigh at 185 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's been there for two years. I'm not there yet. You know, and when I look at it, I say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But but if I, tr if I truly unpack the situation, number one is I don't have a really good reason to attain that weight. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, so now I'll, I'll let folks in on a little secret here. So, and, and anybody, it's not a real big secret because anybody that's taken supervisory leadership knows that I use this example. And I don't think you've ever heard me use this example. So um, back when I was... 19, I decided I wanted to lose weight. And I had a reason because I knew that I wanted to ask my wife to marry me. <laughs> but I realized, all right, I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm not <laughs> going to make a lot of money. I'm not that good looking. So I got to at least help myself somehow. And I think I need to lose some weight. So with that reason, over the course of the summer... I mean, I changed my eating habits. I exercised. I swam every night. My parents had a camp on Otisco Lake, so I swam every night. So changed my eating habits, swam every night. And over the course of the summer, I lost 20 pounds and four inches off my waist. Mm -hmm. So then I go back to the class and I say to them, because I use that example in my goal setting class. So now I'm back to the weight plus a few pounds about above where I was when I thought I was overweight. Mm -hmm. Why can't I lose the weight? And they all come up with the answer because I already have the girl. Mm -hmm. So maybe if she would say, I'll leave you if you don't lose the weight, <laughs> I'd probably lose the weight. But it, it li literally, I mean, I use that as a humorous example, mm -hmm. but that really is a powerful thing in our goals in achieving our goals. Do we know the why mm -hmm. that we want to achieve the goal? Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm, I'm getting pretty close to having a, a stronger why that I need to, to lose this weight is because you know, my, my hip that I injured water skiing is acting up. So mm -hmm. maybe if I dropped 20 pounds, I, it probably would be easier on that hip. So I have to work through that. So I, I did have a, some notes here, that, and I know I shared them with you. Um, this is the process I use in my goal-setting class. And it, oftentimes when we fail in achieving a goal, we need to go back and reset. And the first one is to create a clear mental picture of what it is we want to achieve. Did we really know what we wanted? Mm -hmm. Or did we just have a fuzzy mental picture? And, and this really gets into this, this part too about, you know, the power of the mind, the awareness piece. Um, you know, as your mom would say, the law of attraction. Right. Um, do, I, do I really, am I seeing myself achieving that goal? What does it look like for me? And if I can really get very, very clear on that, I start thinking like the person who's already achieved the goal. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I use that as an example for the, the weight loss thing, um, so if I start thinking about myself as a person that weighed 20 pounds less, then I'm going to eat differently because me at 185 pounds wouldn't eat the same as me at, let's say, 200 pounds or I don't know what I weigh, 203, something like that. So... Isn't it hard to believe that I weigh 200 pounds? That is such an awful thought. Anyways, um, but if you start thinking about it, you'll, you'll act differently. You'll eat differently. You'll exercise differently. Um, decide on actions. You know, so now I know what it is I want to do. How am I going to get there? And go back to your plan. What was it in those actions that you missed? Then the third part is really key is identifying the roadblocks. Have I really identified what could get in the way? And, and one of the things that um, I had to identify early on when I, when I did lose my weight back before I was married was the, the custodian uh, at MacLaw Tool. His name was Archie. And Archie used to every day at 
15, walk past our workbenches, and there was a standard, I had a standard order, it was a, a, a large coffee, um, two creams, three sugars, and a chocolate peanut donut. Mm. <laughs> It was amazing. There was yes. Abe's Donut Shop was next door. It was amazing. <laughs> and all I would have to do is leave a buck fifty on my workbench. And when I came back at 930, it was there. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to go for it. So that becomes an obstacle. So I had to say to Archie, Archie, please don't ask me. Don't even come. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you would have thought he got a commission from Abe. Maybe he did. I don't know. Oh, Dave, you don't need to lose weight. You look. I said, Archie, please. I need to lose weight. So identify whatever those roadblocks might be. Mm -hmm. Um, List the benefits. So I would say to my class, okay, so what did I do that made me want to jump in the water on a cold July night when there's a cold rain and it's windy? And then they kind of look with no answer. And I said, I just thought about the girl. And if you think (laughs) about the girl, you'll jump in the water, right? Which is literally, no lie, that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. So on those cold nights, I would stand on the dock and I'd say, okay, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to make it easier for her to say yes. Okay, now I'll jump in the lake. Um, And there's, you know, clearly there could be a bunch of other benefits. And then you got to write it down. There has to be a detailed plan. And I used the SMART goal, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. If it isn't, you're not going to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, now I will say this. So, and I always clarify, all right, my goal was very specific when I wanted to lose weight. It was measurable, attainable. I was really stretching. So probably if I would have known this back then, I would have bailed on it. Um, You know, that I, I was reaching way outside my league to get her to marry me, but she did. So, Hey, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not going to complain. Um, so again, it was the focusing on the why, you know, why, why did you want to do it in the first place? Mm-hmm. And you may find, you may find when you try to go on the why with your goal, that it's no longer a goal. Mm-hmm. Move on and do not allow yourself to be defeated by it. Mm-hmm. You know, the reason why you didn't achieve it was it, there was no real burning desire to do it. Right. So move on to something else that you have a burning mm-hmm. desire for. Because we've talked about it, you know, you can do anything, but you can't do everything, right? How many, you know, how many goals do you think you can have at once, right? I feel like oftentimes something that I struggle with is that there are so many things that I want to set as goals and it becomes overwhelming because I can't do them all at the same time. And then trying to figure out, do I prioritize them by like, which is the easiest so that I feel successful or do I prioritize them by what makes the greatest impact or, and it can become very overwhelming, so right. what would your advice be in that situation? So you asked me a few questions there. So I'll mm-hmm. try to remember them all because okay. I didn't write it down. So how many? Um, I've heard people say you can manage up to 10. Oh, wow. I cannot manage but, up to 10. Yeah. I, and again, <laughs> I, you know, I don't think you can manage them effectively. How's mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Now, these would be, let's say, annual goals. Okay. So within my year, I'm working on 10 different things. Mm-hmm. If we think about the fact, now I love what Rachel Hollis said once, um, and I forgot the, ex- the example she used. She might have been using the example of playing bocce ball. Mm-hmm. But, and if people want an inspirational role model to follow on Instagram or something, follow Rachel Hollis. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Because she and Deborah Searle are two people that really get this attitude piece down pat, mm-hmm. along with John Maxwell, of course. Um, but she said, pick one and focus on it for a month mm-hmm. and you'll see the progress taking place the problem is when we delude ourselves into trying to do too many things all at once right um so then but so the prioritizing piece so so in in john maxwell's book uh today matters um which i've used some material on to do uh, my daily planning one i john uses the three r's you know so every day we have to do what's required mm-hmm that's part of life. For you, it's, you know, with, with two little girls, there's things that you may not want to do, but it's required. Mm-hmm. Um, then the next one is what gives me the greatest return. Mm-hmm. So if I'm picking on, if I'm looking at my goals, which of my goals is going to give me the greatest return? That's going to be the one that I'm going to focus on. And then the third R in, in prioritization is what gives me the greatest reward. Because if what I'm doing is not going to give me a reward, I'm not going to work on it. Right. So we kind of get the required out of the way. Mm-hmm. 
And then we focus on what's going to move the ball farther down the bocce ball court. And what am I going to really, what's going to speak to my heart when I do it? Mm -hmm. And I think that helps us move farther into this being successful in the goal. And once we begin to, you know, we build momentum, law of 16, law 16, the 21 irrefutable laws, the law of Big Mo, once momentum starts, it's much easier to keep going. Right. I think that's where Rachel Hollis comes from, too, is get get something going for a month so much so that it just becomes part of your life and, Mm -hmm. you know, becomes a habit. Right. And then maybe pick up something that you can, you know, start again and and make that part of your life. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and maybe you can get it so far down that you can let this sit now for a few weeks Mm -hmm. and focus on something else. Mm -hmm. You know, an accountability partner is huge as well. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first committed to writing my weekly post at MACNE, which would have been October of 2016, Mm -hmm. you became my accountability partner. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, the problem was you went out on maternity leave for the first time. And I was like, oh, now what do I do? I'm left all alone. But, but the point was, and, I've, and oftentimes, and I, I've said it to you and I've said it to our, to our listeners, there's times when I get it done only because I don't want to disappoint you. Mm-hmm. So it's the same type of thing. Account- and it's not that you, you, never, you never guilt me into anything. Right. But it's just I respect your time. I know you need to have time to work on it to do the editing. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's an accountability piece. Mm -hmm. I have to get it done. Yeah, and I think, you know, both you and Randy write every week. Right. And have been, and I think you must have started before October of 2016. I think it was, it must have been 2015. No, because I came in on December 22nd, 2015. Okay, okay. So I think... It's been years. Randy started. So, Randy started me. before you, and <clears throat> right. Neither of you have ever missed a week. Wow! And for those who ever. don't know that aren't in Syracuse, Randy is the CEO, president, CEO of our association. Yes. So. And so you, uh, you both have stuck to it, and I think not only have have I been an accountability partner for each of you, but I think you have been accountability partners for each other. Yes. Because you're doing yeah. similar right. project with similar goals, you know, slightly different writing, but Yeah. Yep. And you know, mm-hmm. it's that it's that um the law of consistency. Mm-hmm. You just do it. Mm-hmm. And and you know what I really think is remarkable, Marissa, is that you and I have never missed a podcast. No. I mean you know, I, we, while I was out on leave, we rescheduled some, but Right. Um you know, we had right. some ge- some guest guest hosts. Yep. <laughs> we did. We recorded ahead of time, and and that yeah. again, that's that consistency and that commitment piece. Mm-hmm. It wasn't always easy. Right. Sometimes it was really really hard. There might did we do one where we did a replay? I don't remember. No, I don't I have, think. We, no. no, we've never okay. done a replay. We've been do eighty nine weeks strong here. <laughs> I kept thinking, oh, we'll just do a best of. Like, nope, keep Mm-mm. going, keep going. So. Nope, I think so. That account accountability partner is huge. Yeah. You were going to say something that I interrupted you. Um, what was I going to say? I think. So I you think. Started. I don't know. I think a lot. <laughs> you think and now it's lost. Okay. Yes. Um, so again, you know, visualizing your, yourself achieving the goal. If, mm-hmm. And John Maxwell loves to say this. If you can see it, you can seize it. Mm-hmm. So really, I mean, I, I can't, and I'm learning more and more about this over the last several months. Um, the critical piece is to visualize what that achieving that success looks like Mm -hmm. you know and you because because you really will begin to act like the person that's already achieved it Mm -hmm. and that really needs to be a daily visualization you need to visit your goals and your directions daily how you how do you can't do it how do you think fear comes into play in getting in the way of our goals well, fear is, is our is our non conscious thought life taking over mm-hmm. and giving us all the reasons into our conscious thought as to why we can't achieve something. So we mm-hmm. begin to argue against our own goals and desires. Right. So we just have to you know, as as one of my mentors, Ed DeCosta, used to say, you know, that that negative feeling is a gremlin, put it on trial and convicted of being a liar. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not it you just stop believing it. Mm-hmm. You need to, in in the point, the reality is we can't re, we can't get rid of those negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. 
we have to add positive thoughts and, and affirming thoughts. You know, when that fear makes its way into your head, that's when you pull back that right. that visual. Right. You bring that right. back into the forefront of your mind and yep. and push the fear out of the way. Right. Because if if we let the fear take over, we wouldn't accomplish anything. Right. You know, author Napoleon mm-hmm. Hill said to clearly define what it is you, you're seeking mm-hmm. and read it to yourself every morning and every night. Mm-hmm. And what happens is we begin to build in into our minds, into our, our subconscious mind, the thoughts of being successful in, in achieving this goal so that it will begin to help us find the tools that will ensure that we will be mm-hmm. successful in achieving the goals. And then the last note I had here was create success habits that will move you into the direction of your goals, daily success habits, whatever that right. might be. You got to do it every day. Mm-hmm. It takes a while. Right. But little by little, it all adds up. But yeah. And every, it's that... It's the it's that compounding mm-hmm. uh, interest. You know, consistency is like compounding interest. Mm-hmm. It just builds on itself every day until all of a sudden you look back and say, "Wow, I actually yeah. did that." Yeah, I can do anything. Mm-hmm. So how's that from? That's great. I know I landing, learned. Landing I learned the a plane lot. Quickly. <laughs> I learned a lot, and so hopefully our listeners did too. Good. And just a good, you know, good refresh, a good reminder that like, hey, just right. because it's, you know, it's, we're two months in doesn't mean we've failed. We've got 10 months of the year to go. Exactly. Exactly. The only time you're going to fail is if you give up. Mm-hmm. And deciding not to pursue a goal because there's no value in it, that's not giving up. That's a conscious decision. Right. But giving up on a, val- on a goal that we think is important, yeah, that's the only time you really fail. Mm-hmm. So don't give up. Just keep going. Cool. And start over. So you want to know what we're talking about next week? Yeah. Do you know? Problems. Ah. But it won't be a negative view of problems. All right. I like that. All right? Yeah. Any special events uh, well, going, coming up? Well, once again, we have another uh, birthday party this weekend. So. Wow. It turns out that like three must be the age when birthday parties become a thing like kid parties because we have had three of them um in the month of february alone wow yeah so it's fun though it's really fun to see the the kids interact because now they're they're older it's like they're not little babies anymore and they uh it's sweet so i'm actually really excited it's isla's best friend from when she used to go to school so that's awesome yeah well i just you know this past weekend we were in ohio for our first grandson's seventh birthday silas who was our i still refer to him as our miracle kid Mm -hmm. who was born at 25 weeks and it was just it was a great time um lots of people at the house just celebrating this little guy's life and it's pretty cool to see that's awesome so with that i'm dave freund i'm marissa norcross this was the next page 